What's cracking, big dogs? Welcome back to the HQ. Welcome back to the channel. I am Nicholas. That is Noah at FB God on Twitter. This is Big Dogs Gotta Eat BDGE Fantasy Football. We're here in the roars. The streets is talking. They want more super flex action. If you ain't playing super flex leagues, you're not playing fantasy football. Super flex, for those of y'all that are unaware, is where one of your flex spots in your league, you're allowed to play a quarterback. So it's basically the same thing as a two quarterback league. Today, we're going to do two different strategies. Similar to a mock draft that we did two weeks ago, where one of us had zero wide receiver, one of us had the zero running back strategy, and we kind of wanted to see how that played itself out and uh, see which was the best strategy or what's the optimal strategy. We're going to do that with a super flex um, mock draft today. One of us is going to go with quarterbacks early. One of us is going to go with quarterbacks late and see how our rosters turn out. You guys can obviously vote on that down in the comment section while you're down there. Make sure you hit the thumbs up. That's what we're doing today. We will be on the Sleeper app. This draft is sponsored by the Sleeper app. We will have a link in the description as well as the comments. If you sign up for the Sleeper app down below, you can add us on the app. Uh, my name is Nick BDGE, and you can find him eventually through there. Uh, we will invite you to a private forum, which is only big dogs allowed. So go sign up for Sleeper. Add me. I will add you to the forum where you can ask any of your fantasy questions. So thank you, Sleeper, for sponsoring today's video. Y'all ready to mock draft? Noah, we good? Yes, sir. Talk to just, you. All right. A disclaimer, what? this video might be a bit choppy because I'm out in the boonies right now. So you won't be seeing our faces too much for the rest of this anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Noah's on vacation right now. Still putting out video content. <laughs> it's <officially> fucking wrong. <laughs> We're going to flip a coin. One of us is going to take the 105. One of us is going to take the 111 spot. Whoever's in the 111 spot is going to be going with quarterback early. Let's flip this coin. No, I'll call it in the air. Heads. Wow. It landed in my fries. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, I believe. I, tell. I actually didn't, we didn't even specify who's getting what. Um, I can't say. So I guess I get my pick. I'm going to go with the 105. I'm going to go with the late round quarterbacks. All right. We'll see right. how this turns out. We'll see you guys on the other side of the intro. Also, if you do download the Sleeper app and add us, um, you will be entered into uh, the chance to mock draft with us. So these two guys, Daffyamon, I don't know what the fuck that means, and the only JDP are two of the uh, Big Dogs Forum subscribers. And we uh, throw out some trivia questions when we're doing these mock drafts. Whoever gets them right gets to draft with us. Are we ready to go? Yes, sir. Let's get this bread. Okay. Begin draft. No QB. So we, we saw Zico off at the 101, and uh, it's a common question I get now. Would you still take him at? Wow, this is ridiculous that Kamara fell to me. So Zeke is pretty much off. He's the 104 for me technically, but the further we get into the off season, the further I'm going to be moving him down my board. Like he's the last guy in that top tier of running backs. So I'm kind of ecstatic that Alvin Kamara falls to me. Um, would I take a quarterback in the first round? I would think about Mahomes, but it would have to be at the later part of the first round for a super flex. I'm not someone who really likes to use their um, first round picks on a quarterback. Usually not the second round pick either. Obviously, I'm going to be a late round quarterback guy in this draft for strategy purposes. But quarterback is very deep as it always is in fantasy. So uh, we'll see how it shakes out. I'm going to go with Kamara here and lock up my RB1. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer pick. I'm pretty surprised he took David Johnson over Kamara there. And we saw the game last night. I know Cliff Kingsbury didn't want to put like his full offense on display, but like uh, Edmonds and David Johnson, they weren't used out of the slot as receivers at all. And the couple rushes David Johnson did have was like right up the gut. So it was shades of Mike McCoy. Say, yeah, you, uh, you tweeted that out. Like, it'd be so funny if we just saw Arizona come out and run the ball right up the middle. And then David Johnson immediately gets run right <laughs> up. The but they did use them both in the passing game um, from, a, uh, from a screen perspective. They were, they were throwing them in the screens and they were getting chunk yards that way. So I didn't hate what I saw, but we'll have to see in the next couple of weeks. Yeah, I'm going early QB here, and there's a bunch of QBs I still like, but my QB2 right now is Deshaun Watson. I kind of like the addition of Duke Johnson, especially now that Kiki QT goes down because those are two guys that are going to be used in the short yardage situations. And with QT out, who usually runs out of the slot, they're going to be able to put Duke Johnson at receiver, which the Browns did sometimes last year. I know he didn't really have too big of a role, but um, I like that addition for the team just overall, giving Deshaun Watson a little bit more help and somebody to dump the ball off to because their offensive line is absolutely atrocious. 
And I'm not going to go a second QB right here just because, I mean, more are going to fall to me later, and I already have an elite one with a pretty high floor and a good ceiling with his rushing ability. I'm going to go with Nick Chubb, who I think right now is currently my RB5 as it stands because Zeke is sitting. But I think his ceiling is just so high in that offense right now with all those goal line touches. Yeah, as soon as Duke got shipped out. Uh, we also don't know the severity of QT's injury. Supposedly it's not that serious. So if it's just like a sprain or um, like an MCL sprain or something like that, then he could come back uh, realistically in like three weeks or something. We know like Joe Mixon had something with a sprain in his knee last year early on, came back after two weeks of rest. So QT might be out, but we don't really know the severity of it yet. We're filming this on Friday. So by the time you watch this on Tuesday, you'll probably have a lot more information when it comes to um, QT. Now, I took a running back off the rip. I still see a couple of running backs that I really like in terms of tier. I think Travis Kelsey is a phenomenal value here. And I actually think I would be looking at a guy like Travis Kelsey because normally I, I, I fade the tight end for the first like two or three rounds, those elite guys, because running back is so shallow this year. But the fact that I already got my running back one makes me feel a lot better about where I am running back wise. So I'm going to take the value in Kelsey here. I just paused um, it because I don't know if you were going to make the pick in time. Sorry. Come on now. Stop that. You're a pro. My bad. Yeah, I like that pick. I'm pretty surprised he fell. <laughs> I'm surprised he fell to the 2 8. He's a guy who I usually see around the 1 2 turn. And I know Tyreek Hill is back now, so people are like a little hesitant on him. But Tyreek Hill was there last year, and he was pretty much like a, like Kelsey put up like top five wide receiver numbers. So I don't see a reason for him to slip that fall. Yeah. Um, I mean, the only, reason, the only reason I would be thinking of someone else is because I really like Dalvin Cook. And I think that if Kamara Cook pairing would have been really nice. But you'll see that in super flex leagues. You'll see since quarterbacks go pretty early, um, you know, a, a skill player will fall. Will fall to value, and I, I, I typically like the strategy of going skill player for the first two to three rounds, and then leaving with your quarterback one either in the third round or in the fourth round, depending on how your tiers are stacked up. Typically, I would probably take Carson Wentz here, have him as my quarterback one, and then not worry about the quarterback until maybe the fifth or sixth round, where I could pick up a a uh, Dak Prescott or a uh, Lamar Jackson even, or someone like that. But since I'm going to go with later round quarterbacks and, and late round quarterbacks for super flex is pretty much just uh, like the fifth or sixth round because most of the top guys are off the board. At this point, I'm probably going to stay away from Antonio Brown just because I don't know what the fuck's going on with his foot. They haven't heard much. Uh, this is kind of fucked up because the rankings are, are messed up and they have Terry Kill down here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and snag. I didn't realize <laughs> That's a good right there. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, Terry Hill is normally not going to fall to the third round, but it's this is probably based on ADP of sleeper, and for a long time his ADP was all the way down prior to his knowledge of not getting suspended. So we'll take that with a grain of salt, but obviously um, we could talk about, like, stacking Terry Kill and Travis Kelsey. How do you feel about that, Noah, uh, since that's, they're both passes on the same team? That's perfectly fine. I mean, I'd, I'd take Mahomes too and just get all three of those players. I think Kelsey week to week is just going to be like the most consistent tight end that you could have. And he's pretty much like a top 12 receiver week to week, whereas Hill's going to give you those boom games. I think pairing that floor and ceiling at two opposite positions is just going to give your team such a high advantage, especially like the positional advantage of having a tight end like Kelsey. Yeah. I like, uh, I like what the guy after me, Daff, Daffyman. Done. Yeah, I like that. Daffyman and Marlon Mack. Uh, Marlon Mack, I'm pretty – I'm nervous about the Andrew Luck calf thing, but I've seen some stuff on Twitter. I saw one of the, the pro football doc or whatever said to book it that Andrew Luck will be on the field week one. So that makes me feel a little more confident. I don't think he'd go out of his way to say some shit like that unless he was confident about it. Um, so with that being said, like I think Marlon Mack and T.Y. Hilton are probably going to continuously fall. I am definitely monitoring it from like an injury standpoint. I'm a little bit concerned. But, uh, but I think Andrew Luck will be back on the field, and I will be taking Marlon Mack in the third round where I can if Terry Kill is not on the board. Yeah, even if he's not, they have Swag Kelly there. So that's just an easy, like, 300 yards, three touchdowns a week. But I'm going to take carry on Johnson here just because I'm at the turn. I'm going to get a quarterback I like on the way back. Um, we talked about carry on last week, just how high of a floor he has now that uh, Theo Riddick is out. He's going to get so much receiving work. That offense isn't great, and the, my decision there was kind of between him and Aaron Jones. But Aaron Jones' hamstring isn't completely, like, cleared up yet and Dexter Williams had a pretty decent showing I know it was the first preseason game but I'm not so sure that he's just gonna step in and get like a workhorse role coming off a hamstring injury and now I'm gonna go with another quarterback and there's Russell Wilson here Drew Brees Cap Newton I really want to take Kyler Murray here I'm like super tempted I think I'm actually gonna go with Kyler Murray just because 
I have Deshaun Watson. Pairing him with Kyler Murray, those are probably going to be two guys who are going to be maybe top five in rushing yards for the quarterback position. That just gives you a decent enough floor week to week. And they're both in offenses that have a ton of weapons that can easily get in the red zone four or five times a game. And just they both have extremely high upside, but I also think that their floors are like very solid week to week just because um, what they can do with their legs. Yeah, Kyler looked really fucking solid yesterday. I think he started off, what was he, like seven for seven? With he was six for six, but it was like six for seven because Keyshawn Johnson stepped out of bounds and then went back in. So, Okay. So, yeah, I mean, he was almost perfect last night, and you saw a lot of that quick-hitting air raid offense that they're talking about. Kyler is going to be a beast this year. Um, when I try to mix and match quarterbacks, I mean, depending on your scoring settings, if, you, um, if you're in a league that does six point per passing touchdown or even um, – it's 20, 20 passing yards for one point, you're going to want to value quarterbacks to throw the ball better a, a little bit more. So, for instance, like maybe Kyler takes a step down or – I mean, he's a great passer, so maybe not Kyler, but like Cam Newton per se. You would probably um, start looking at guys who throw more touchdowns, throw more yards. Like Kirk Cousins is a good example because he's going to finish with 4,300 yards, 28 touchdowns. Not exciting, but in a six-point for passing touchdown league or yardage bonuses kind of um, – that's where you're going to start looking at guys like that in a little better light. Can you pause this for a sec? I'm looking yeah. at the board. Yeah, and I'll just talk a little bit about what I would take, like uh, typically do. I chose Deshaun Watson early, and he's a guy who's like – he might be inconsistent week to week. He does have that rushing floor. But if I choose a quarterback that high up, I'm usually going to try to pair him with a guy with like an extremely safe week to week floor, like a guy like Kirk Cousins, maybe a Matt Stafford, Phillip Rivers, just so I know that out of my super flex spot, I'm going to get a guy who's going to produce more than like a typical wide receiver three would in that flex spot. All right. So we have a running back. We have a tight end. We have a wide receiver. I'm going to fade the quarterback position once more, which is risky and super flex, and I don't really suggest doing so. But, again, I think it's deep. I think it's deep enough that I can do that pretty comfortably. Um, Running backs on the board, I really don't like any of the guys that are left on the board at this value midway through the fourth round. I like Derrick Henry typically I would like, but the calf strain makes me very, very, very – very nervous. Um, those of y'all that watch preseason games, Deion Lewis obviously got the first two snaps with the starter. Jeremy McNichols is an interesting name to keep an eye on. For those of y'all on Dynasty, he was uh, a player that a lot of people like coming out of college because he had a three-down skill set, didn't work out in Tampa Bay. Finds himself possibly as the RB3 behind Derrick Henry and Deion Lewis. If Derrick Henry's hurt, then uh, he's, an, he's a name to keep an eye on in Dynasty. I will go with a wide receiver here. Um, and I'm probably going to go with Adam Thielen instead of Stephon Diggs. Those are the two guys I'm looking at and I think Adam Thielen is a better pick for where I'm at right now because I went with Terry Kill who's more like boomer bust who's more high upside um, and Adam Thielen gives you that weekly safety valve like I think Diggs and Terry Kill are very similar in terms of fantasy production like Diggs had a ton of games last year that were like under 50 receiving yards so did Terry Kill so uh, I like to pair you know someone who I think is going to be consistent out of the slot getting you know six seven eight catches a game with the Terry Kill who will give you those boom games as well um and we're sitting here at round five. This is when I would definitely look at a quarterback because if I fade the quarterback here, by the time it gets back to me, I'm going to be looking at like a Mitch Trubisky as my quarterback one. Looking at these rankings, I probably have Dak Prescott as my quarterback one among all of these guys. If Zeke holds out, I think his passing production shoots right up. I think they're going to ask him to pass the ball a lot more. And with that also comes more rushing yards because when you're dropping back and, you know, if it's a broken play or whatever – um, that makes Dak, I think, very, very valuable. I, I like Jared Goff here, too, um, but his splits are a little bit concerning. I like him more in one-quarterback leagues when you know when to play him and when not to play him, and you can actually stream players. So I'm going to go with Dak here. Yeah, and I know it's just training camp videos, but what we've seen out of Tony Pollard so far, like running down the seam and just out the sideline, he's like – he's super athletic. He's like – I don't even know what he's going to bring to this team, kind of like a Tyreek Co- uh, Cohen type of – like role. And I think yeah. even if Ezekiel Elliott sit, that's like so valuable for Dak Prescott just to have somebody out of the backfield, along with having like Randall Cobb out of the slot, Michael Gallup progressing, and obviously Amari Cooper. Mm-hmm. And the way my team's looking right now, I don't have a tight end, two running backs and two quarterbacks. OJ Howard's on the board, Henry's on the board, Engram's on the board. One of those is going to fall to me. And there's a couple receivers I really like here. I'm going to go with Robert Woods just because he's such a consistent player week to week. And with Cooper Cup out, he's going to be probably their number two option in the passing game, if not their number one option for at least the first half of the season as Cup progresses. And even if Cup's not going to be out, though. 
he'll probably be playing. Yeah, but he'll probably be a little bit more limited than he would if he was 100%. Even if he is 100%. I mean, we saw last year with Robert Woods go for, I think, what was it, like 1,100 yards and seven touchdowns? More than that, because he put up almost 200 rushing yards, too. He's a beast. Yeah, so I think that's just a really safe uh, pick right there at the end of the fifth round. And of these uh, tight ends left, I have O.J. Howard, my highest ranked. And I know if I wait, he's no – like none of these three tight ends, uh, Henry, Engram, or Howard, are going to fall back to me. So I'm going to go with yeah. O.J. Howard here and just wait to get another mid-round wide receiver. Yeah. Um, so we saw – there you go. I see like five or six quarterbacks went off the board. If I didn't go with Dak, I'd be sitting in a world of hurt right now. Um, and then I'm looking at other quarterbacks on the board. I'm thinking if I fade – quarterback now you always have to look ahead especially in superflex to see if there's going to be a quarterback run right the guy next to me has not taken a quarterback yet these two guys after him have only taken one so there's a good chance that like three or four quarterbacks go off the board and right now the only ones I want here are Lamar Jackson Kirk Cousins maybe like Jimmy G Josh Allen Matt Stafford once for, for one thing Josh Allen looked miserable throwing the ball deep yes last night like, really bad. He missed on so many deep fucking passes. It looked like the same old Josh Allen last last year that throws the ball deep 20% of his passes and wildly inaccurate. Jimmy G, like, I kind of like him, but, dude, like, what are these reports that Dante Pettis is running with the twos? I don't know. They have, going? they have Kendrick Bourne as their starting receiver, and he was, like, their second leading, like, guy who got targets last year, and I just don't – I don't know if he can hold that role. I would just love to see Pettis out there with Debo Samuel, but I guess that's just not in the cards for that team. I think what they're – yeah, like, I think that just tells you that things are, like, messy out there. Um, so, I love Tyler Lockett right here. And this will go back to my point of why, like, taking a Travis Kelsey here is not the best move. Like, I could have had Dalvin Cook there, had my RB1, RB2, and then grabbed Hunter Henry here. Um, so, looking back on it, again, like, season-long drafts, I like doing that in best ball. I think he's – I think Kelsey's a great value in round one, round two of best ball. The reason it's so tough to do it in season-long leagues is because there's no depth at uh, – there's just no depth at running back. So you, you, like, have to have, you know, running backs within the first round or two. Because once you get to this part in the draft, it's like things get messy very quickly. Although there are some running backs I still like here. Yeah, if but we knew Geis' situation, I'd be, like, super high on him right now. But if we knew his situation, he wouldn't be a seventh-round pick. Yeah, I'm going to grab Kirk Cousins here as my quarterback, too. Again, he's coming off a year where he just set career highs and – passing touchdowns with 30, right? And through for 4,300 yards, I think you're going to get something similar. I know that they're going to go pretty run heavy, but Dalvin Cook is phenomenal in the in the receiving game. He has some of the best weapons around him in the NFL with Thielen, with Diggs. And I also like stacking. I, I like that little Kirk Cousins, Adam Thielen stack as not even guys that are my quarterback one and wide receiver one, um, but as my twos. So I, I kind of like that as like a weekly ceiling boost as well. For a guy that, you know, for two guys that I picked with floors, I like sacking for because uh, it gives you a little bit of a ceiling effect as well. Yeah, and Kirk Cousins looked awful, like, from a fan's perspective last year where he finished. And it's mostly because he didn't get those rushing touchdowns because the past couple of years he's had, like, four or five rushing touchdowns, which really boost his points at the end of the season. But if you just look at the numbers he put up, over 4,000 yards and 30 touchdowns, you'd be, like, happy to get a guy like that in a super flex league as late as you just did. Yeah. And with, um, with, no, go ahead. Yeah, with what I have now, there's – like, I don't know why they have A.J. Brown this high. I'm not going to take him at all. They still have Tyler Boyd on the board, and that's just, like, a no-brainer for me. I'm going to have two guys with really high floors and him and Robert Woods right here. And on the way back, I'll probably grab another receiver if a good one falls. And I like Christian Kirk. I could pair him with Kyler Murray. Let me just see if there's anything else available. I might go two tight ends right here. I might just grab Hunter Henry right here so I can get that positional advantage over other people I know. I like the, the wide receiver I picked there might outscore Hunter Henry. The fact that I'm taking away like an elite tight end from another roster and I can play him in the flex along with OJ Howard, I think just gives me the positional advantage having two really good quarterbacks and two really good tight ends. Dude, I moved Evan Ingram up to my tight end four. I think really? um, not in standard though. I think I still have him below those two in standard. I don't know. The more I think about it, the more like Evan Ingram is just going to get like 115 targets, if not more this year, because they have no one fucking playing. They everyone just keeps getting hurt. Um, Shepard sells his broken thumb. Tate's miss gonna miss the first four games. Like he's gonna get so many targets. And this is another reason why I wish I paid a tight end because even Evan Ingram falling to the eighth. Now, when it comes to drafting a third quarterback, if you wait on quarterbacks, you know, here's the thing in super flex leagues: quarterbacks have a ridiculous amount of value after your draft. 
I can pick a guy like Josh Allen or, or Sam Darnold or something in the eighth or ninth round. And as soon as a, court, a team needs a, a third quarterback or a second quarterback, say someone else's quarterback gets hurt or he busts or something, the trade value of these quarterbacks goes up so quickly. You know, like I could flip a Sam Darnold for like someone that someone took in like the fourth round or the fifth round or something, right? So you're getting such a steal in terms of uh, – in terms of like the value that you get at the quarterback position. So it would probably be in my best interest to take a third quarterback, but we're still going to go with Miles Sanders, you bitch. <laughs> yeah, reports out of camp are really good. And I didn't watch that game. I just saw the box score. He was three rushes for three yards. But again, it's the first week of preseason. And I didn't watch the game, so I can't speak on it. But don't hold too much value in like eight snaps. I mean, yeah. he's going to be a guy who's going to like lead this backfield and touches by year's end. He's going to get passing down work in an elite offense. So there's no need to worry at this moment. Good fucking snipe on me there, JPP, JDP. Um, I was going to go with Darnold there. Ew, he puts me in a tight spot. Now I don't even really have a quarterback three. Um, so typically I would say if you wait on quarterbacks, because obviously the further you wait, the, the worse your quarterback situation is going to be. Thus, the more um, – the more you should invest in a third quarterback. I'm not really sure of the words I'm trying to fucking say there, but you all get the point. And I think like here it puts me in a pickle because I didn't invest into a third quarterback when I should have there instead of Miles Sanders. But going with like a zero-ish RB approach where I went Kamara and then faded running back for seven rounds, I'm looking for a guy who has upside over the second half of the year, and that is Miles Sanders. I think he'll win the job by like, you know, five, week five or six and get the most touches in that backfield. Um, so I'm there with Miles Sanders, but someone who can give me instant production is Austin Eckler. Because at this point, it's feeling like Melvin Gordon is not going to be suiting up for the Chargers for the first, you know, um, seven or eight weeks or whatever it is, right? Because I don't think they're going to get a deal done. Austin Eckler looked really good last night in preseason. And just going off what you said, these rookie running backs, none of them got the starts, right? Miles Sanders did not start over Jordan Howard. Devin Singletary did not start over Frank Gore. Um, who are these other running backs, the other rookie running backs uh, last night? I was going to say Madison, but he didn't, they didn't play last night, right, the Vikings? I only saw, like, a couple of games, so I wouldn't be the best to ask about this. But, yeah, I don't think any of the, the rookie running backs, like Jacobs didn't play at all. David Montgomery did not start over Mike Davis, but he looks like a fucking beast. Um, so don't fret about preseason week one. If we get to week three and that rookie is not getting at least 50% of the snaps with the starters, then you need to worry. But for right now, not worried. Give me Austin Eckler here. He looked really good, and I think he has value in the ninth or tenth round, regardless of if Melvin Gordon's here. Yeah. Um, right now, looking at the quarterbacks, I need a third quarterback, and I have two guys who are like elite. So I would just need a guy with a safe floor. And there's a couple guys left on the board, so I'm actually going to fade it, and I'm going to grab my third receiver right now, who's going to be my flex. It's me, Christian Kirk. I was thinking about taking him the last time around, but getting that stack with him and Kyler Murray, he's probably going to be his number one target, maybe number two behind uh, Larry Fitzgerald, but he's going to get those deep looks. And Kyler Murray just looked really good uh, yesterday, just extending plays. And their, their offensive line looked awful. The Chargers were getting to them, even without Joey Bosa out there. So I think the fact that uh, Christian Kirk's like a quick guy who can get open deep down the field if a play collapses, kind of like what Tyler Lockett does, um, I think he's going to be like a great option for Kyler Murray and has upside of like hitting 1,000 receiving yards. I'm with it. And then right now, quarterback, it's in between Andy Dalton and Nick Foles and – I'm going to go Nick Foles. I don't, I don't really like that pick at all, but I need a third quarterback just for that bye week. And I, I really like D.D. Westbrook this year. I don't like much behind that, but the thing about Cincinnati is they have no offensive line. Right now they only have really Tyler Boyd. Like words are coming out of the camp that Stanley Morgan might step up, but he's an undrafted free agent. I just think that there's a lot more known in Jacksonville, and they paid Nick Foles to be their franchise quarterback. So I hope he can return value in, what, the 10th round. So it's not too much of an investment. It's just tough because there's a lot of wide receivers. Like, I think there's a lot of good value on the board still at wide receiver. Um, and their ADP is a little fucked up on here because, like, Marquez Valdez-Scantling is typically, like, a ninth-round pick at this point. Same with, like, Deshaun Jackson and stuff. But if I'm looking at quarterback, it sucks. Like, Dalton is going to be shot without A.J. Green. But he's the only one on this list that you could be like, okay, he's probably going to play the full 16 or he's going to be the starter for a full 16 if he is healthy. Like, Mariota can easily get overtaken by Tannehill. Dwayne Haskins might not even open the year as a starter. All these guys have question marks. So, it sucks, but I'll probably have to take Dalton here. I, I, I might take Marcus Mariota if I redid that again, just because I think he actually, if he's healthy, he's not a horrible fantasy option. Um, but that's obviously a big question mark. And with Tannehill kind of right on his heels after last night, we'll have to see. 
Yeah, I don't really know what to make of that QB situation because whoever starts in Tennessee is probably just going to be a game manager at best. And I think whatever Marcus Mariota can do, Tannehill can do as well. And I don't see a reason for them to just keep pushing Mariota out there if he's not looking, if he's not living up to like what they expect him to be. Okay. Still a lot of good players on the board between wide receivers and uh, yeah. So I'm looking at my team. I, mean, I have three really solid wide receivers and Terry Kill, Adam Thielen, Tyler Lockett. My running backs, I'm a little less confident about. So I'll probably grab another running back here. Uh, I like Jalen Samuels. Duke Johnson in Houston looks enticing. I think I'm probably not as sold as a lot of people are. I think, I mean, that, that whole role is very up in the air. I mean, Deshaun Watson barely ever targets his running back, so I think people are probably getting ahead of themselves a little bit. I'm a fan of Peyton Barber. Y'all know that. Um, I would probably think about taking Justin Jackson if I didn't take Austin Eckler. I love Brita. We're going to go with Brita here. That's what I was looking at. He's way down the board. Yeah, There's no reason yeah. he should be going this late. No, I mean, it's definitely just ADP. He's probably like a 10th round pick at this point. He'll probably be up into the ninth or eighth. I mean, at this point, you can pretty much feel like, you know, Jarek McKinnon's going to miss time, right? And this is that's concerning because it's been like a year, almost uh, it's almost 12 months, and he's obviously not anywhere near 100% because he's getting PRP injections. And those things take like two to three weeks to kind of heal and, and settle down and really get back into shape. And then he needs to get back into game shape. So wouldn't shock me if he ended up on the pup list. And if you give me Matt Breida as the RB2 in that offense, he's going to play the Tevin Coleman role from the Falcons um, and let Tevin Coleman play the fucking Devonta Freeman role. So there are one-two punch where Breida's probably going to get, you know, 12 plus touches a game in an offense that really knows how to open things up for running backs. Yeah. And there's a few running backs here that I kind of like, and I doubt the team after me is going to take a few, just looking at how many running backs he has. So I'm going to draft the guy that you just mentioned, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. In a typical draft, he won't be going in what round are we in, the 12th? Yeah, he won't be going in the 11th round. So um, I wouldn't expect him to fall to you, but there's still a couple of decent players like Kiki QT. If his injury does get cleared up, he's a decent enough pick at that spot. And now looking at the running backs, you brought up Duke Johnson. I don't expect him to be the guy a lot of people think he is just because he has like a good player profiler and like yeah. he's big for like a small running back. Like his weight is good for his size, but um, – he's a good safe play like in the 12th round just a high enough floor Peyton Barber's also here Devin Singletary but that offense scares me but I think it might be a little biased I'm gonna go Justin Jackson we saw him play last night and he got he played second fiddle to Austin Eckler if if Gordon sits he's gonna have as much of a role as he did last year when Gordon was out I think like 10 to 13 touches a week is in his cards and Eckler did get the goal line touch in the game to start and he fumbled and then Justin Jackson, when he started getting more play, got a touch, I think it was like inside the five-yard line, and he scored. I think neither of these guys are going to be like a 70-30 split. It'll be closer to like 60-40, 55-45. And I think at that value in the 12th round, you're going to get a guy on a good offense who's probably going to get double-digit touches a week. So I'm fine with that pick there. Yeah, I like Justin Jackson in the 12th too. Um, I'm, I think he'll go a lot higher too. Um, yeah, I like both these guys. Like, I like Eckler more straight up by a long shot, but – Justin Jackson's a really good pick, too, if Melvin Gordon does miss time. But they're going to they're gonna see an almost identical split. And I wouldn't be surprised if those goal line carriers went to Justin Jackson. My nuts dropped when Eckler fumbled that ball. I was like, fuck. There goes <laughs> all of, like, the goal line opportunities that he could have had. Yeah. Um, running backs, wide receivers. I'll probably take a stab at Kiki QT here. I know, like I always say, do not draft. You know, don't find injuries because they'll find you in fantasy football. But I am in love with Kiki QT as a talent and what I think his involvement is going to be in this offense. So the fact that we've heard it's not that serious, he's got basically a month from when the injury happened to be ready for week one. Um, so if it's something that's two to three weeks, four weeks, I'm going to feel pretty good about drafting Kiki all the way in the 12th round and kind of cementing the wide receiver group there because I think he has a lot of upside and a lot of floor if he's on the field. We're in the last round because we're not going to go all the way to the end of it. Quarterbacks. Um, do you have any thoughts on taking a fourth quarterback or what are your thoughts on drafting guys who might end up in like a, a QBBC quarterback by committee? The only guy around here I'd like really be interested in is Fitzpatrick because I think he's got like a lock to start in the beginning of the season. Whereas the rest of these guys like Haskins, you don't know when he's going to be thrown in. Same with the what about, uh, what about D? DJ looked fucking good last night, man. Daniel you Jones. Watch. The real D No, I actually watched that one. That was the one I was streaming on this bougie. In that fucking drive. Yeah, he, he did look very good. Um, they didn't have – the Jets didn't really have any other good defensive players, but he was putting balls in, like, on the sideline. His touchdown throw, I don't know how it got to that receiver. It, like, went right under the safety's arms, but he did look really good. And he does have rushing upside. I mean, he ran, I think, like a 4.7 or 4.8 at the combine. 
and they have a good yeah, offensive line. So, if I'm in a deeper league, bro, if I'm in a deeper league, like a 14 team, maybe even a 12 team league, and it's you know the 15th, 16th round, I might invest in Daniel Jones, let him sit on my on my bench because, like you said, the rushing upside is there, man. If he gets on the field, he'll probably give you like a floor of 25, 30 rushing yards, and if he can come away from some a few games, you know, scraping 200 passing yards, maybe two touchdowns or something. He's going to be a viable quarterback to start in fantasy. He's not someone I'm excited about. I'm not going to reach into like round 10 or 11 or anything, even in a super flex, because he might just end up sitting for like six or eight games, and that's useless to you. Uh, but I grabbed Deion Lewis here because, again, that calf strain to Derrick Henry, Dr. Moore said the optimal recovery timetable for that is like three to six weeks. And if that pushes the upper limits of that, then that could be regular season time. And that means Lewis is probably in for like a 15 touch roll here. Yeah. And right here, I have four wide receivers already. And there's always so many like good values later in the drafts. And the fact that I took two running backs really early, if one of them gets hurt, I'll kind of be screwed. So I'm going to grab another running back here. It's going to be Damian Harris. And I think the fact that he didn't play tonight just instills the confidence that he's going to be having like a big enough role in this offense where they don't want to get him injured early on. Even if he gets like a Rex Burkhead type of role early in the season, I think that's enough to return like back in RB3 value. And then the 13th round, that's just like a – that's a steal in my eyes. And especially if uh, Sonny Michel goes down, we've heard that he's, like, lining up at receiver, uh, catching more balls out there. And we already know Damian Harris has the receiving upside. So if they use him in that role, if Sonny Michel goes down, I think in the 13th round you can get a potential RB2 in fantasy. Yeah, for sure. Um, let's look at these other teams that these guys got going on. Uh, and, again, if you guys enjoyed the video so far, if you're enjoying it so far, uh, make sure you hit that thumbs up button subscribe to the channel if you are new let us know what you think about our teams who ended up with a better team let's talk about the only jdp's team first went with dj mike evans leonard fournette stefan diggs david montgomery quarterbacks lamar jackson josh allen sam Darnold, marcus mariota i actually like his team a lot because he faded tight end was able to get austin hooper all the way down in the 11th round it was a nice floor play for the falcons he'll give you four catches for 45 yards um sometimes he'll sprinkle on a touchdown i am i've been very vocal about not touching fournette um, just in the third round just because the injury concerns pretty much put him off my board. Obviously, if he could stay healthy for 12 to 14 games, then you have a killer pairing of David Johnson, Leonard Fournette. I think he did a really good job of um, developing his team through his wide receivers. Like, you know, wide receiver one, Mike Evans, Stephon Diggs, uh, wide receiver two, DJ Moore, wide receiver three. And it's not like he reached for any of them. He got all of them at very good value. And I think they kind of slide right into those roles, respectively, for your fantasy team. And then he did a great job of waiting on quarterback. Like, he did a much better job than I did, I think. He waited an extra round, still ended up with Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, Sam Donald, Marks Mariota. You can definitely get two starting quarterbacks um, in your fantasy lineups out of those four guys. What do you think about his team? Yeah, three out of those four guys have really solid rushing floors in Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, and, and Mariota. And yeah. Arnold, I know he only played, like, one series last night, but everybody kind of looked good. But I think the weapons that they have really help him this year because they have Robbie Anderson who can stretch the field. And that's not like the, his only role in the offense. He can be used in the red zone also. But Jamison Crowder, too, is just like an extremely quick receiver out of the slot who just gives him that safety blanket if and when that pocket like collapses. And then even Le'Veon Bell out of the backfield. So I think he's a pretty good like upside play in the ninth round. And w the way he drafted his quarterbacks, he doesn't need to start him week one. So he can wait until he develops a bit. Um, the only thing I would have changed is he took Leonard Fournette Sorry to interrupt, but yeah, they had a great first drive adjusted on that uh, in the preseason game. I will say, though, that his first pass, Sam Darnold's first pass should have been intercepted and it could have put a dent right into that fucking um, excitement for him. But after that, he recovered, had a great first thought, drive, led the team down the field. Le'Veon Bell did not play. Tom Montgomery got every snap with the first team as a running back. Saw a couple targets, got a couple handoffs. So I think that's notable um, just as a weapon that I think is going to be on the field for a pretty good amount of plays. Yeah, and I think that's kind of a window into Le'Veon Bell's role. And I said it on Twitter, I think, like, to look at how they use Chase Edmonds when David Johnson goes down, because I wasn't expecting David Johnson to play in the beginning, just to see, like, what, how they use uh, Chase Edmonds if they line him up in the slot or something like that. So I think using Tom Montgomery, how they did, kind of shows how they're going to use Le'Veon Bell, because Le'Veon Bell is pretty much, like, double the value of, or, like, twice as good as Ty Montgomery. So whatever he just did last night or a week ago when you guys see this is kind of what I expect out of Le'Veon Bell. The only thing I would have changed about this guy's team is at 3-4, he took Fournette. And at 3-6, Marlon Mack went off the board. If he flipped those two, and he just reached, not reached on Mack, but he took him instead of Fournette, I think would have liked his team a lot more. But I agree. His team is, like, extremely solid at wide receiver. Running back outside of Fournette, I really like. And the quarterbacks he chose as late as he did, I'm a big fan of. Yeah, personally, I, yeah, Marlon Mack, Tarion Johnson. I probably even would have went Aaron Jones over Leonard Fournette. But for the most part, really solid. If you look at Daffy, he went Mahomes and Cam Newton. So he stacked up a powerful group of uh, – of quarterbacks and this is you know this is like the big takeaway I think 
is that like he took Odell in the second and he didn't really invest much capital into wide receiver, but you could just see how much value he got. Like Curtis Samuel in the 10th and Deshaun Jackson in the 11th are extreme, like extreme, extreme values for fading the position for so long and still ending up with those guys as your wide receiver threes and four, I think are great. Um, Marlon Mack, Chris Carson, Lamar Miller, Royce Freeman. I'm probably staying away from Lamar Miller in single digit rounds now, but I, I like the stacking of the running backs. Uh, I think you'll need something. You'll, you'll need a few things to break, right? Or, you know, or not break, I guess you should say from an injury standpoint between uh, Chris Carson and then you need Royce Freeman to hopefully he gets as much work as they're saying he's going to get. But he looked good last night. He broke off a 50 yard run after Philip Lindsay kind of started the game, got the first three or four touches. Royce Freeman mixed right into the, uh, to the starting um, drive. So that tells you that they are legit um, interested in, in using this as a running back by committee. So it's going to be interesting there. I would, I would probably be a little bit worried about Marlon Mack being, or not Marlon Mack, but just like the overall, I mean, you don't really have like a, a high elite number one running back right now. If, if some, you know, if Marlon Mack doesn't work out, then your running back situation is kind of fucked. Yeah. After Marlon Mack, if you look at all his running backs, like we know at, like all of them are going to be in timeshares. Um, I, I do like Chris Carson where he was going earlier, but the news that he's going to be the, like the solidified starter has kind of brought him up one or two rounds in the sixth yeah. or seventh. He was like an auto pick for me, but right now I'm just not sure what his role is going to be because if you look at like Rashad Penny's college target share, it's much better than Chris Carson's was. And I know that offense didn't throw the ball a ton, so it didn't take him many receptions to get to that college target share. But um, he's going to have a role. Rashad Penny's going to have a role in this offense. And I'm just not like convinced that Chris Carson's going to dominate goal line touches. And that's probably where he's going to derive a lot of his value from. I'm, I'm more nervous about Carson's injury history. He's just dealt with so many throughout his career. I think if Carson stays healthy, that he will dominate touches once again. But Rashad Penny looked really fucking good last night. He looked way more explosive. He caught a screen pass and broke it off for like 25 yards and looked really fucking quick and really fast on the pass. And he's a guy who's 220 plus pounds. So to be able to do that is something that not a lot of NFL backs can do. So Rashad Penny is very good. Yes, he's in the timeshare there. Chris Carson, this is injury stuff kind of concerns me. So in the early fifth round, that's probably about where you need to be targeting Chris Carson. I don't know if I'll personally invest just because I like my I like my running backs one not to be in a committee two to really catch the ball. But all right, cool. Well, that's going to uh, wrap up the video for today, y'all. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped out those of y'all that are in Superflex. If you're not in Superflex, then hop on the Sleeper app, download it via the link, add me. I'll add you to the forum, and in there there is a uh, forum for big dogs leagues to create to join leagues or whatever. You can get into a Superflex league and try it out. Hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And we will see y'all on next Tuesday's video. Thanks.